afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2020 Spirit of San Juan Awards. I'm Katie from The Wake Up Call on 106.5 The End. And uh, thank you so much for having me back as your MC this year. Obviously, this year we're going to do this a little bit differently. Uh, I am the product of the San Juan Unified School District as a graduate of El Camino High School. Go Eagles! And I just want to thank you for joining us virtually as we celebrate individuals and groups who help others in their school community, demonstrate positive character, and support an inclusive environment for others. And even though we can't celebrate in person this year, I'm still super excited to introduce you to our seven honorees. And of course, if you want to share your thoughts and photos of today's event, use the hashtag SJSpirit20 on social media. Now let's get started. I'd like to introduce San Juan Unified's Board of Education President, Paula Vasquez, to share a few words. Thank you, Katie. I'm also very excited to be able to recognize a few outstanding individuals and student groups who have made such a positive impact on our community. This is our seventh year of holding this ceremony, and this year we had more than 130 nominations submitted. Let's take a brief moment to recognize all of our nominees. I am excited to have been able to see most of our heroes in action. Our honorees today go above and beyond to create the world that they want to live in. All of them seek to create a more understanding, caring, and inclusive world. And it's our incredible luck that they happen to make that difference here in our neighborhoods for our families and for our community. Thank you for setting an example every day of what it means to be a servant leader and to serve others with all of your heart. You truly embody the spirit of San Juan. Please join me in congratulating today's honorees, each one with their own unique story and positive impact. I'd now like to turn it to Superintendent Kern for a few words. Thank you, President Viasquez, and hello to everyone tuning in. These are truly unprecedented times, and we hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. I'd first like to start off by thanking two very important community partners who continue to support our district every year, Kaiser Permanente and SMUD. Both Kaiser and SMUD have sponsored our Spirit of San Juan Awards in the past, and despite us having to move to a virtual event, they remain committed to providing their support. We truly thank you for your generosity and look forward to our partnership for years to come. Next, I want to say thank you to all of those who were nominated. There is incredible work taking place all across our district, and your dedication to our students and families is appreciated. Also, a big thank you to all of those who took the time to nominate someone. Lastly, thank you to our MC, Katie. We are so glad that you once again were willing to support our district and MC the awards. I'm looking forward to learning more about the seven nominees who truly embody the spirit of San Juan. Back to you, Katie. Thank you, Superintendent Kern. Now it is time to get started with our first honoree today. It is Veronica Allen, a bilingual instructional assistant and neighborhood liaison at Grand Oaks Elementary School. Now, Veronica was nominated by three parents at Grand Oaks. In one of the nominations, a parent wrote, Veronica has made sure that my family has had support during school breaks, and many times she has brought food from the food closet at the district office. This is not her job but she knows the need of my family and others. Let's learn a little bit more about Veronica. And jump up 10 spaces. Is Veronica is a person who is very amable, always with a smile, helping all the mamas. Veronica, I think, is a person dedicated to her work. She has helped us a lot, especially with the Latino community. I work here at Grand Oaks Elementary. I am the bilingual instructional assistant. She comes into our classroom, which is so helpful, works with all of students when they need it, but primarily our English language learners, and it has just opened up the door for those kiddos to have that opportunity for one-on-one. -on -one. The kids they are being able to practice the English and the Spanish, and if they don't understand something in English, I can explain them in the Spanish and, and they can get the concept. So, and they get more um, excited too because they, we speak the same language. So, I also been able to be the liaison at the school, so I help the parents. Muy dedicada a, le gusta su trabajo. Es de esas personas que dices, no, no hay un signo de pesos para ella. 
last year during the Paradise Fires, um, I was able to help the families. We had the families at Ranoxa have also families that they live in Paradise, so they were somehow affected. I called them and made sure that they were okay, if they need any resources or support. With this pandemic, I have been uh, calling the families, specifically the ones that speak Spanish. Some of our families, unfortunately, they have lost the jobs or they have reduced hours. So I reach out to different community members and I have been able to distribute uh, baskets of food and bags of food. I, the warmth that she gives to the kids and that ability to just make sure that they, they're where they need to be and it's a resource that I can't imagine doing without. I want to help the students and families at Ranox because I want to be treated like I wanted to be treated. I want them to know that they have a voice, that their voice is important, that this education starts at home and if they get support, they are able to help their students. Congratulations, Veronica. Let's hear directly from Veronica about how she feels after receiving this award. In honor of receiving the Spirit of San Juan Award, I want to thank first God because he has given me the skills to be able to help families and the students at Grand Oaks. I also want to um, acknowledge my family and uh, thank them for their support and love and also for the teachers and co-workers at the school because with them we work together to benefit the families and the students. Our next honoree today is Christina Burkhart, a program specialist in the district's English Learning and Multicultural Department. Christina was nominated by four of her colleagues. In one of the nominations, a colleague wrote, Christina's positive attitude towards helping others, specifically the refugee community in the San Juan Unified School District, has benefited the school and the community. Christina always attends events to listen to the needs of the community, connect with district staff, newcomer students and their families and refer them to resources that they need. Now let's take a look at Christina's dedication to helping refugees and immigrant families. I would say she has a can do it attitude, except it's really more of a will do it attitude. And by golly, she forges ahead. She is tenacious. Christina is amazing. Christina is not only a manager, she is a leader as well. Christina runs our, our refugee project that is, she's really truly committed to um, excellence and excellence of a program that services her refugee community. Basically, my uh, uh, familiarity with Christina began through my children. Uh, I think she is also uh, grew in an immigrant family and I found that she profoundly knows uh, the needs uh, uh, of the immigrant families. Uh, my parents are immigrants from Mexico, um, so a lot of the experiences that I see um, these students are the experiences that I personally uh, went through growing up. Uh, bringing in a young child to translate, to have them translate for parents, uh, to ask questions and look for resources. Um, those are the things that I did. I remember walking into the IRS um, at eight years old and translating for my mom because of the language barrier. So we don't only support um, students, we support the family. Um, a lot of the time what we do is we'll do uh, parent workshops to help them understand the American uh, system. For example, uh, San Juan um, discipline policy, San Juan attendance policy, San Juan uh, lunch program. Now, there are so many opportunities that were created by this program. And my, now my one of my son, both of them are working, but one is directly working with San Juan School District, which is great. It's very rewarding to see that we are making a difference, you know, so I feel like sometimes I, I shouldn't get paid because this is something that everybody should be doing. Wonderful work, Christina. Now, of course, we want to hear from Christina herself. I want to thank, first of all, my family, my three children, Analia, Mikey, Jacob, for putting up with my crazy schedule and for always be willing to um, help out any way that they can. I want to thank uh, my team, my uh, refugee newcomer team, which is a big part of everything that we do. I can't do anything without them. They're essential. They're an asset to the district. Um, my boss for being awesome and always um, supporting me and always uh, willing to 
take a chance on my crazy ideas and I'm going with it. Dr. Calvin, Dr. Calvin for her support also. Rosemary for always helping me in anything I can, anything I need help with. Um, I want to thank all the people who have helped me, all the departments throughout the district. Um, I want to uh, thank everybody who's um, helped me in any way, not just in the district, but around the community, community partnerships. Um, none of this is a one woman show. It's all everybody helping, everybody willing to go above and beyond to do everything that needs to get done to help people. Um, and the crazy part is that I get paid to do what I love. I love to help people and I've somehow made a career out of it, which is great. And thank you, San Juan, for leading the way um, with innovation and programs and support and um, equity. Our next honoree is Krista Green, School and Community Intervention Specialist at Mesa Verde High School. Krista was nominated by two Mesa Verde students, as well as Citrus Heights Police Chief Ron Lawrence and Wesley Herman with the Citrus Heights Police Activities League. One student wrote in their nomination, because Miss Krista has made such a safe and cheerful space at Mesa, kids are more willing to talk about their problems, whether it's school, home, or anything along those lines. There have been fewer physical confrontations between students and more building of friendships because Miss Krista goes out of her way to make things healthy and happy. Let's take a look at Krista's work at Mesa. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Krista is just one of those people that uh, when you meet her, you're instantly drawn to her. You know when you get that vibe from someone, you're just like, oh my gosh, I love you. That's how I feel about Miss Krista. She's him, period. She's him. Here at Mesa, I'm the School Community Intervention Specialist. I work with students that sometimes need a little bit more help, some assistance, whether it be here on campus, some stuff outside of school, whether it's just somebody to talk to, they might need some clothing, food. Um, a lot of our students struggle with situations outside of school, so I try and be that person that's kind of a sounding board that they can talk to. And they had this thing called the BSU, which is the Black Student Union, and Miss Krista being Caucasian, like you wouldn't think that she would step in. Well, she stepped in, and so she definitely helped them be more comfortable in their skin. Like for me, definitely, she made me feel more comfortable in my skin for being black. And she finds all kinds of ways to, to get us involved in, in city initiatives as well. So our connection with, with the community leaders has grown because of Krista. She is absolutely uh, in the right spot for her personality. Um, she cares deeply about the community, the kids, and in particular the school. Uh, and I think that's that's something that's, I don't want to say that's rare because I know there's a lot of dedicated folks in the San Juan Unified School District, but I do think that having that passion um, is really what kind of makes people stand out from others because it's not just going there and collecting a paycheck for her. This is a calling. She feels strongly about it um, and, and it, it resonates in everything that she does. Congratulations and a job well done, Krista. Now let's hear directly from her. First, I'd like to thank you, say thank you so much for this award. It's a true honor. I'm extremely grateful. I'd like to thank my family, my friends, my husband for all their support, whether it was just a phone call on a tough day, a nice conversation, or even just a drop off lunch. It's always greatly appreciated. I'd like to thank Chief Lawrence, Lieutenant Herman, and the entire Citrus Heights Police Department for your dedication and compassion to our Citrus Heights schools, as well as our Citrus Heights community. I am proud to say that I am live and work in Citrus Citrus Heights because of all the work that you do. Um, to Principal Bross and the administration at Mesa Verde, thank you so much for all your encouragement, pushing me out of my comfort zone, your sense of humor and the openness that you have created to um, create a family environment, the enthusiasm and desire you have for growth, not only for your students, but for staff. You have all truly been a personal contributor and mentor to my personal and professional growth. To the staff at Mesa, it truly takes a team and I am so proud to be part of this team. Thank you so much for all your hard work, not only with staff, but with students. And to the students, thank you all so very much. You're the reason I do what I do. Through the good times, the tough times, the smiles and the cries, your preservation and drive amazes me each and every day. You have taught me more than I will ever be able to teach you and for that I'm truly grateful. Again, thank you so much to everyone for this award. Thank you for your nominations, not only this year, but in years previous. And I hope to see everybody soon. 
Our fourth honoree today is Kamika Hebert, Youth Employment Technician with the District's Foster Youth Service Program. Now, Kamika was nominated by two colleagues from the Family and Community Engagement Team, and one of them wrote, Kamika is continuously opening her heart to those surrounding her, especially youth. She currently works with the foster youth students, but recently created a girl group at San Juan High School called Magic Girls. This group is focused on self-love, resiliency, healthy relationships, amongst other topics the girls have asked to focus on. The group offers the girls a safe place to be themselves and to talk about their struggles. Let's learn more about Kamika. So I've known Kamika for over 10 years, working with her through Foster Youth Services Department here together. I consider her one of our hidden gems here in Foster Youth Services. She's that safe space for our students. Um, you can't really teach anybody to be that safe space or be that warm-hearted, welcoming person. The one thing I love about her is that she finds a way to make a genuine connection, even if it's um, you know far. If she you know she sees you every other Tuesday or you know every other month or every day, she tries to make that strong connection. I hold life skill classes for foster youth, and I also conduct a girls group at San Juan High School. And me and the girls just do a lot of self-esteem and mentoring. This is a, something that she's decided to do primarily because she also grew up in the foster care system. Um, she grew up with family members incarcerated and she wanted to stop that cycle. Every foster student has a, a, a different story of the reason of being in care. My story was very unique um, because I did have a loving family to take me in and, you know, really just loved me as if I was their own. And so the love that they provided to me, I really just like to give that love to our current youth um, that are in the foster care system. The African proverb, it says, your legacy is how they speak about your name after you're gone. So I see her wealth and her relationship with the students is that they will continue to speak about her. They will still feel connected with her because they don't feel judged when they're with her. They feel accepted. As a foster kid, myself speaking for all the other foster kids, and the most thing that we want in this world is someone that we can at least kind of relate to, even if it's just a little bit, and she provides that. I really want her to keep going because there's not a lot of people like her in her field of work. Amazing work, Kamika. Now let's hear from her and hear what she has to say about receiving this award. It truly is an honor to receive one of the San Juan Unified School District Spirit Awards. It truly humbles me to know that people want to recognize me for the work that I do with our amazing students. I believe in the motto, it takes a village to raise a child. And I've been so fortunate to work with people who also believe in this motto, which allows us to give our very best to our students. From here on out, let us remember to always spread more love, less hate. And remember, no matter where you come from or the challenges you've been through, you are somebody important. Special shout outs to the Family and Community Engagement Department and the Foster Youth Services Department for truly going above and beyond in supporting the youth and families we work with. Thank you so much for this award. Our final individual honoree is Jessica Mendoza Torres, School and Community Intervention Specialist at Sylvan Middle School. Jessica was nominated by two colleagues and one of them wrote, I could write many instances where Jessica has helped our community. The one I'll share is when one of our female sixth grade students came to the school with her eyebrows shaved by someone else when she was asleep. I sent the student to Jessica and Jessica gave her the best eyebrows every day for the next few weeks until her eyebrows grew back. The student didn't miss a single day of school and had the confidence to go to class every day. Jessica is always going above and beyond for our families. Now let's take a look at Jessica's work at Sylvan. 
Middle School schedule pickup. Hi, Miss Jessica. Hey. So many positive things I can say about Jessica. She is great with people and but it's her heart. Jessica is hands down one of the most genuine people I've ever met. Uh, her intentions are always to do what's best for kids and for their families. She encourages us to be the best person that we can. Jessica's official title is Community Intervention Specialist Assistant. Um, however, she goes far and above the, the, the duties required for that. So I actually run, let me think, four clubs. I run our BSU club, which is our Black Student Union. I run our Girls Empowerment Club, um, and I have our Sylvan Spirit Squad, which is a dance club. And I have Origami Club, that's my newest one. Uh, she supports attendance at our school. She works with our EL students and their families. She's gone on more field trips than I think almost any other staff member. I was kind of the one organizing it but Jessica went ahead and got all the field trip permission slip forms and as she took care of it. And, and for somebody that's not a credentialed teacher, just to take charge like that is just, it's, 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 un, it's crazy. She'll, she'll on a drop of a, drop of a hat, she's there to, to translate and, and help us um, with, with families. And, and a lot of times she helps families uh, feel comfortable because not only is she translating, but she does it with, with care and compassion. I just, when I see them, I think of my mom, so I make them feel really comfortable. My mom was always so afraid to go to school and ask questions because she didn't speak English. So when they come in, I always make them feel really comfortable. Like, yes, come in, welcome, we're here for you. <laughs> and it just feels great to be able to help them also. Um, it means a lot doing this uh, kind of job because I struggled a lot in middle school and in high school, and I wanted um, someone to be there for me and to hear me out, and I found an awesome mentor. And that's what I want to be for a student, a good mentor, someone they could go to when they just want to talk, when they're having problems, when they need anything. I want to be there for them because I had that person be there for me. She wants to be a school counselor, by the way. I don't know if she told you that. Absolutely, and I can't wait till she does because I will find a spot for her. <laughs> She's just a person you'd want on campus. She's just incredible. Amazing work, Jessica. And frankly, do I rose an easy girl. So good job. Now let's hear directly from her. This is a very special and meaningful moment in my life. I am humbled that some of my colleagues felt that I deserve this award and took the time to nominate me. I am surprised that all of us at Sylvan are not receiving this award because we have the best hardworking staff members at Sylvan and we all deserve this. But I am pleased to be receiving this award for all of my hard work and dedication I've been doing along our amazing team. I have the privilege to be working at Sylvan for over four years now and I am blessed to work with such amazing and passionate people from our admin to our office staff, teachers, teachers assistant, our hall monitors and our hardworking janitors. I'd like to give a special thank you to Mr. Bebo, Mr. Young, and Ms. Katie, who have been nothing but supportive of me since day one. They're always there for me. They're always there to listen to me, and I feel cared for and valued. And the next person I'd like to thank, I'm sure a lot of you already know, she's my right hand, and is Ms. Marty. She's our school counselor, and she's always been there for me. She was my high school counselor. And I honestly don't know what I would be without her. She's always been there for me. She's always been supportive and loving. It has taught me so much that I'm not so passionate and thankful for. Thank you for believing in me and sorry for all the gray hair that I've cost you over the past years. I know I sometimes I'll be stressing her out. As I say here before you, I also have a deep sense of gratitude towards my friends and family and everyone who's been there supporting me and continues to support me throughout my journey. I am beyond blessed and thankful for my people. And thank you again to everyone that loves and supports me and congratulations to all the other nominees because I've had the pleasure of working with a few of you and you are very truly deserving of this award. Let's virtually celebrate. <laughs> Next is our first group honoree, the Social Justice Lunch Bunch at Sierra Oaks K through eight. This student group was nominated by Sierra Oaks teacher, Vanessa Libby. In her nomination, she wrote, our school has benefited from the Social Justice Lunch Bunch 
by opening up avenues of communication with adults and students, creating a plan to make a more positive and welcoming environment, and showing that one person can make a difference. Like-minded students are ready to help. They just need to be given the opportunity. This group is doing all of this just to leave a legacy and to make change. Now let's take a look at the work that these students are doing. Social Justice Lunch Bunch was started by one of my good friends, Jada, when she saw that there were some issues at this school that she wanted to change. Um, I wrote a letter to Miss Libby. I just said how I've noticed people that have been treated and how they're feeling. Read the letter with Vanessa and we talked about it. I was sad. Um, I was really um, upset that students were feeling that way. And so I said, okay, well, I'm going to figure out how to make this go forward. We're able to create this group and make a survey. Some of the questions were asking if people were discriminated, like being discriminated for their race, sexuality, or any, any way they felt about themselves. So I was very surprised from everyone's answers. I just never realized that they felt this way about our community. Jada brought us and our close friend group into it and said, hey, guys, do you want to start this movement with us? We had a lot of good ideas. We haven't put any of them into action yet, though. So I was invited to be in the Social Justice Lunch Bunch, and I thought it was a really great idea to help change our school. I believe it's about how we help the school and our community be better, do better, act better. Feeling like I'm making a difference at school, but I do like being able to do it with my friends also. I wanted to make a difference in the school, so for the younger kids, it would be better experience. I wanted to make bullying stop. I'm hoping that it will change um, how the school perceives that stuff and how we treat one another. Um, we're working on ways to make it a more comfortable environment, make sure that students feel more safe and make sure that students feel more welcome and that they want to come to school, that school isn't a place that they consistently dread and consistently think like, oh, this is not where I want to be. Even though you might not see changes right away, over time it's going to make a big difference. Like, maybe not for you, maybe not for the grade below you, but for the grades like the first, second, third graders, if this continues and we continue to put in work and effort and make our school a better place, they're going to see the difference and it's going to be a greater outcome for future generations. Guys, this is all so cool. Let's hear from them about how they feel. We are very grateful for this award. Yay! <laughs> I, I want to thank Miss Livy and Mr. Busby for helping us like start this. It was like it's just a small idea and we were trying to get across a point of um, just being more aware of bullying and because it's always been an issue but I thought this brought it more to light and I really want to thank those two teachers for helping us. Uh, first off, I want to thank like the people who originally like had the idea to make the group. I think we all wanted to make the school a better place, but the people who like originally started up was the reason that we were able to have this group in the first place. Like Mia said, I want to thank Miss Livy and Mr. Oh. Busby and Miss Vine for helping us do all of this and everybody in this group because without without everybody we wouldn't have been able to um you know take it this far now it's time for our final honoree this year the trajan social group from trajan elementary school this student group was nominated by trajan parent melissa diaz and in her nomination she wrote Despite the differences in others, students treat all equally. In a world of judgment and bullying, they rise above and genuinely want everyone to feel included. This bravery and confidence it is what removes barriers and allows others to follow. Now let's take a look at the work that these students have been doing. I created the social group because with autism, there are deficits in social skills and I felt like if I created this social group that that would really help target those deficits and really work to benefit um, my students. I I help the, the special needs kids 
just never been there and I wanted to see what it was. Me and my sister like to go to Miss Amy's class to help out people they, that really need help and that need friends. Cause I like teaching so I might like help like teaching them like how like how to not like like break other people's stuff. Cause um, they need help um getting friends and um I know it's hard to get friends. Because we thought it would be fun to help others and not bully others. I didn't know that he was doing it every week. Anthony was um, saying that he just really enjoyed it and it, it just gave him a lot of confidence. And, you know, he was able to teach them and it um, felt really good to him. Before this, he was mostly interested in uh, adults who could like more communicate with him and, and things like that. Um, but now he's really showed an interest in like his peers and even people younger than him. And it's it's really blossomed into like actual relationships. Like he comes home and he tells me about Noah. <laughs> and he never used to do that before. Now our kids say hi to each other and they kind of play outside and and it's been really neat to see that interaction. Oh, I, I would like to continue this group and I've only um, kind of had it for my first and second graders, but next year when my kindergartners are first graders, um, I will continue it with them and we will just keep going with this. Would you tell other people to join? Because I, I think they would have a lot of fun doing it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Such good work, Trajan Social Group. Now let's hear from them directly. Thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the award, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd love us all to do a virtual round of applause for our seven amazing honorees. I want to thank you all for joining us for this first ever virtual Spirit of San Juan Awards. We hope that our honorees today have made an impression on you all now that you've seen the positive force they are making in their schools and communities. These examples of strong character in our district can inspire each other, and we know that even the smallest actions can have a lasting impact on those around us. Be sure to like and comment on the video and share your message with all of our honorees. Also use the hashtag SJSpirit20 on social media. Be safe, guys. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'd love to come back next year and just know all of this would have done with my little co-host, a tiny baby kitty.